everyone, this is Leadbetter 17P. Today we're going to rebuild some coils for the Nimbus clone that I have. This is a uh, rebuildable dripping atomizer, an R RDA. Uh, this is a clone. Uh, I've already drilled out the holes. We're going to build a dual coil, du uh, dual coil build for it. I already got one coil made for it already, just to save some time show that to you real quick here is I don't know if you can see that or not but there is one coil already made I'm using uh, the campfall wire that I'm using is this right here this is from Temco this is a hundred foot roll of 32 gauge Canthal A1 uh, annealed round resistance wire a uh, hundred foot roll of this from Temco is like five bucks great deal uh, so we're gonna set that here we're wondering why I have a little blowtorch you'll you'll see here in a little bit here in a few minutes um, I already have a piece of wire here all twisted up I took two pieces of the 32 gauge uh, Temco uh, Canthal wire and twist it together to make a, a thicker gauge but, um, <coughs> excuse me, what we're going to do is do six wraps on this little precision screwdriver. I'm not sure what the, you know, the size of it is, but it seems to work good for me. So, I probably can't see what I'm doing, but I'll show you after. We're going to do six wraps, so we got one, two, three four, five, and six, and then do like a half a wrap. Now, if you can see that on there, we have the wire wrapped around the end of the screwdriver. This lead on the end, that I'm holding on my thumb, you want to fold back around and fold back down. That's how I do it. So now we have six wraps. I like to take it and squish it against the screwdriver as much as possible. It's not going to be, you know, together perfect until we torch it. So what you want to do now is take any kind of a clippers or fingernail clippers or wire cutters or whatever. Cut off the bit of wire that you do not need. Set that aside. I still got enough there to probably wrap another two coils. But uh, we're going to trim this up a little bit and make it a little shorter. Just so it's out of the way. All right. So here is what our coil looks like right now. I don't know if you guys can see that. Hopefully my camera is focusing. I really apologize if it isn't. What we're going to do now is heat this coil with that little pen torch, the Burnsomatic pen torch I have, and squish that closer together so it looks like the other coil. So we'll set that down, get our coil all set up. You're going to need, for this part, you're going to need a little torch. And this has like a little stand it stands up on, I, but I also like to prop it up a little bit. It's easier for me. You're going to need a pair of tweezers. As you can tell, I've torched these tweezers quite a bit. And a little word of advice. I've burnt myself doing this from the tweezers getting hot. Nice pair of needle nose pliers or, or something to hold on to the tweezers with while you're heating up the coil comes in handy really comes in handy saves your fingers uh, so what we're gonna do first I know this probably sounds a little half backwards but we're gonna light our torch turn it all the way down this is a, a butane uh, burns o pen torch I bought at Home Depot for like 10 bucks uh, it was uh, like a little soldering kit. It comes with a soldering top that goes over it and screws on. I use it just for the torch for this. It works good for me. But turn it on. Use a lighter to light it. Turn it up just a little bit. Get that nice blue flame going. Then you want to grab your coil and your tweezers and wedge that coil in the tweezers and pinch it together as well as you can. There, I don't know if you can see that or not. That's how you want to hold on to it in the tweezers. 
So now, like I said, to save your fingers, this is how I've saved my fingers. I just hold it with the pliers. And then you just take it, put it right down to that flame from the, uh, the torch. Heat that coil right up every so often, pulling it off of the uh, flame, letting it cool down. Blow on it a little bit. Make sure it's nice and red, nice and hot and red. And that should be good right there. You can go ahead and turn your torch off, set it aside. Now, as you see, the uh, coil is still pinched in there. But it will stay just like that once I let go of the tweezers. Do not grab the tweezers with your hands. They are hot. I've learned this the hard way. So I go ahead and set it down. Let the coil out. And I set these aside so I don't accidentally pick them up again. I've done that too. Uh, coil is not hot. But there you go. Uh, there is a coil all built and ready to go. So what we're going to do now. Now that I drop the coil. We're going to pick up the coil that I just made, since I dropped it on the floor. And uh, I don't have an ohm reader, so I'm going to use my MVP as my ohm reader. Because when you press the button here, you can check resistances. And it will read resistances under 1 ohm. It just will not fire them. So what we're going to do is take that, screw the Nimbus on top of that. Just like so. Pop the top off the Nimbus, set the top cap and drip tip aside. Now the screws has three posts. Uh, what's going to happen is one side of the coil will go in here and then through the middle. The other coil will come on this side and go through the other post and through the middle. So there will be two leads going through the middle post and one lead on each end. So what we're going to do is now take a coil, we're going to put it back on the screwdriver that we uh, wrapped them on, just because it makes life a billion times easier. And we're going to take these and try to put them through these tiny little pinholes in the, in the posts. This part is a pain, especially if you shake like I do. And it doesn't help that these posts don't really line up too well. And there we go. There's one in. So what we're going to do now is pull that tight on the outside post. Grab our little Phillips screwdriver. I don't use the one that came with it. I like my own Phillips screwdriver and we'll tighten down the screw on the end post. Don't put it overly tight, just snug. You don't want to over tighten it. All right, that's it for that one. That one is done. So go ahead and take your screwdriver out. You can actually read the ohmage of it already. It's a, it's a 1.6 ohm coil, but it'll change once we put the second one in. Uh, here's the second coil. We're going to do the same thing over again. Put it on our screwdriver. Going to make sure that's bent up just a tad. Now I'm going to trim these again because they are really long. The nice thing about the Canthal wire is that it is easy to cut. And somewhat easy to work with. It's a little hard to see what you're doing at times. Especially if you don't have good lighting. Like, I do not have good lighting. So I'm sorry if the video is dark. I forgot to put my overhead light on. Uh, like when I used my overhead light that I used for my reviews. I forgot to hook it up. But you want to put... Now you got this one go the opposite side. Put it in the post. I always find the middle one a pain to get in, especially if there's already a, a wire going through. You gotta kind of wiggle it. 
No, I actually bent it. So I gotta take it out. Try again. It takes a little bit of practice to feed these coils in. I find it to be quite a pain at times. So I'm sorry if you guys can't see what I'm doing. I just want to get this in there so I can show it to you guys so I can show you how to wick with cotton. And I think we got it. Maybe. We might have it. Tweezers are thankfully cooled down now. I'm going to grab this and try to push it through. There we go. We got it this time. Grab the coil from the other end. Someplace. Now if you've got bumbly fingers, and by bumbly I mean like I shake when I do stuff like this. So that's what I mean by bumbly fingers. Sometimes it's going to be hard for you to do this. Like you know, You're going to wreck your coils the first couple tries. I know I did. Okay, so that coil is in. We're going to pull that outside post just in a little bit. We're going to gently snug that screw down just to hold on to that wire. I'm going to bend that up out of the way. And now we are going to secure the center post, which holds the wire for both coils. And just like that. Now, you have all your coils on there and you got all the leads uh, still stuck to it. But a lot of it you can just kind of wiggle them around and they pop right off. Um, thankfully, at least on the end ones they do. Uh, let's see if the middle one will actually agree with me today and do what it's supposed to do. What we're going to do is use the tweezers for this so I can actually Alright, that don't want to come out Let's See if I can get in there No, of course not, I can't get in there and clip that out Alright, so we're going to go one little step further Tighten that screw down just a hair more Make sure it's tight so we're not yanking on wires. Break the one off from the other side first. Should be popping another pretty soon. Trying to do it without wrecking a coil. Alright. I'm just going to try to clip them. Normally this is how I do it. I just break them off. I just don't like leaving extra pieces of wire in there. That's my issue. Oh, I missed it. Alright, now let's read the ohms on this and see what it is. 0 0.8 ohm coil. That is exactly what I wanted. So what I'm going to do now real quick is straighten up my coils. Because obviously messing with the ends like that pretty much screwed up my coils a little bit. I want to straighten them up so when I wick, I can put the wick right through. Alright, make sure they're still the same. Still 0 0.8. So what we're going to do now is pull this off of the... Yeah, and drop it on the floor as usual. I got the dropsies today, everyone. Hopefully I didn't wreck them. They survived <laughs> the fall to the floor. I got the dropsies bad when it comes to e-cig stuff, when it comes to this. But uh, we're going to take my Patriot right off of the, uh, the Nemesis for this, because this will go right on the Nemesis. Set my Patriot aside, which my Patriot has a 0 0.8 ohm build in it. Alright, now we got to take the top cap off of my Nemesis. 
we're going to unscrew the connection post a little bit and attach the bottom part of the Nimbus to the top cap of the Nemesis and then we're going to tighten up that connection pin. And I have this in 18650 mode with no kick. Uh, we're going to put it back on now. We need to adjust our bottom switch just a little bit. And just a wee little bit more. And tighten the switch back up. And then let's fire it. See how it fires? Ah, look at that. They glow real nice, actually. Good deal, good deal. I am quite happy with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wick this. Uh, I use cotton as a wicking material. And we're just going to take a cotton ball out of the bag here. Grab yourself some all-natural cotton, like organic cotton. And just start peeling. You know, I peel off little strips of the cotton just like so. And they don't have to be that long. Having a small pair of scissors handy comes in, you know, or having them close comes in handy. Because you're not going to need a whole lot of wick with this. I mean, heck, one cotton ball is going to make you probably, <laughs> you could probably make 15 wicks, 15, 20 wicks out of one cotton ball easily. As long as you don't roll them too big. All right, there we go. Set that one aside. This will be a wick right here. What you want to do is put it in between your fingers and twist it. Just like so. I know this took me a little bit to learn how to get it perfect when I first started doing this. Make sure you get one end nice and tight. And then what you want to do is feed that through the coil. Just like so. Pull it so it's just snug. You don't want to go too tight with it because it will restrict juice flow. Cut off excess coil that you don't need. Set that aside. Now I use something small like my little precision screwdriver. And what I'll do is... kind of move some of this stuff around, move the cotton around and put it under the coil, if it cooperates with me today, of course not, there we go, you got one side of that put under, now we're just going to stuff the other side all in. And there's one wick put in, ready to go. We're going to twist up the other wick real quick. I'm not going to show you how to twist it again because I already just showed you. I mean, you can watch, but that's all you get. I only really worry about the end of it being rolled real tight. But... Get that coil. It's like threading a needle. Literally. And cut off the extra of the wick that you're not going to need. I mean, some people will stuff all that wick in there. They will find a way. Uh, I don't. I don't bother at all. So, just stuff that wick underneath the coil. And stuff that in there. And there you go. There is a dual coil build ready to go, ready for juice. So we're going to use this random juice that I have sitting here on the table. This is called Peppermint Patty. This is from Great White Vapes. Uh, this is a 15 mil bottle. It's supposed to be zero milligram, but uh, I had another chocolate mint left over 
and a 5 mil bottle, so I mixed them, and that one had nicotine in it, so I don't honestly know what it is now. I know it's got a little bit of a bite, which is good. Uh, this one's a fun one to vape, uh, so we're just going to go ahead and saturate these coils and the wick. Now, first time with new wicks, especially with cotton, I've noticed, it's going to take quite a bit. going to take quite a bit of juice. You're going to think you're overloading it. I know I did the first time I ever did this. I thought I was putting way too much e-juice on it when I really wasn't. Actually wasn't putting enough. Sorry for all the noise in the background. We got construction work going on outside. Alright, there we go. That should be good. Give this a test fire. And she's firing. Slowly, but she's firing. There we go. Let's toss our top cat back on our Nimbus, just like so, and give her a vape. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. A little on the harsh side, because... I'm still not used to this vape yet. I'm still not used to the uh, Nimbus. I've been I've actually been using my own e-juice, which is up here. This is a clear bottle that I made. There's no nicotine in it. It's just a straight VG mix with uh, vanilla cupcake flavoring, and I, that's what I use in my Patriot, so I can blow big clouds. That's what I pretty much got this set up for. But there you guys go. Sorry for the mess in front of you, and I hope you saw everything, and I hope it was all in focus. But that is how I build a dual-coil setup for my drippers uh, between my Patriot and my Nimbus. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the comment section below with any questions or concerns, and I'll try to get back to you. And uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. So this is Leadbetter17P. Thanks for watching.